Let's test this guy. Run and jump past him. Look at that. In my last Godot multiplayer video, we had a look at how to spawn players into the world and also synchronize their position, but it was very basic. So this week I want to have a look at how to be able to move your characters around and be able to look around with the camera and have that position in motion and rotation synced across to the other clients. And I also want to look at how to sync the animations like idle, jumping, walking and running so that the other peers that are connected can see your actions and movements in real time. So let's dive in. So let's have a look at where we left off last time. As you can see, our synchronization is very basic, but it does work. We can't move or turn the camera in any way that's meaningful. Uh, so let's have a look at how to fix that. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is actually look at the player input script, which handles the keyboard and mouse inputs for the player. And this file is what the player has authority over. So when they're playing the game, they don't have authority. The client that's actually playing the game doesn't actually have authority over the player object. They only have authority over the inputs, the keyboard and mouse. And maybe I'll touch on that a little later, but just keep in mind that the only thing that the actual client is controlling is the inputs to the player. So we have some basic variables already set up here for uh, synchronization, but we need to add a little bit more. This do jump will help us uh, to get the jump working correctly, and we'll see that in a minute. We're gonna export camera, camera base. And a lot of this, a lot of what you'll see here is based off the demo project that Godot has. So if you're curious to how some of this was set up and you wanna look at something more complex, I'll put the link to that project in the description. So now we've got some new objects to represent the camera. We need to adjust our camera in the player model a little bit. So first I want to do is move the camera mount out from underneath our model. We shouldn't really be putting that there. So let's just drag this up to the top there. And there's our camera mount. Great. And we're going to add a camera rotation object. And let's attach a spring arm and the spring arm will help us um, make sure we don't run into collisions or buildings. It keeps the camera from clipping into the walls and that sort of thing. I'm going to set the collision mass to two. Basically, it just uh, prevents the uh, spring arm from colliding into the player and kind of causing this uh, jittery effect by bouncing off maybe a wall and the player's head, you know, back and forth. So that'll kind of prevent that. And then let's just bring our camera 3D down in there so that we have our camera mount, which is the base of the camera. We have our camera rotation, which will represent the spin of the, and rotation of the camera, our spring arm, and of course our camera, which is attached to that spring arm. And I like to set the length at about 2.4. And of course we need to come up to our player inputs. And now that we're exporting the camera base rotation and camera 3D, we need to drag those over so that we can track those within the script. So you can see camera base is mapped to the camera mount camera rotation is mapped to the camera rotation object. And then our camera should be mapped to the camera 3D object. And it is. Okay, great. And you can see that this uh, player input object is mapped to that script that I have here. So we also need to add a couple more constants to use with the controls for the camera. Uh, we're keeping this under 90 degrees because it kind of breaks the camera movement once it hits 90. Uh, you've probably seen that error a couple times if you played around with camera. So we're just going to keep this uh, this X rotation clamp to uh, 98, uh, 89 degrees. And then we'll just move our maximum X rotation to 70. And you can play around with that depending on how you'd like to have your uh, maximum camera. Uh, it's just up to you. All right, so let's make a change here. Let's remove this set process. And we're going to say, so if this current authority is the client that we're on, we're going to set that camera as current. So if it's not the authority, we don't want them coming in here 
and uh, running any of the process functionality for this player input. We only want the authority client to be able to call this. So that's what this is saying right here. Uh, if, if they don't have authority, it comes down here and it sets this process uh, to not run. So it will only be running on the client authority owner of that of this uh, player character. And we also turn off any inputs for that as well. So we have this input RPC here that will notify all the listeners that the player has jumped. And we use that jumping variable down here that is synchronized to let the other clients and the server know that the player has jumped. And then we also have a run uh, variable here, which is synchronized. And this is actually kind of a nice highlight between where you want to use a a sync variable or a synchronization export variable or a RPC. So like a jump event is like a single event that happens. It's not like a continuous event. So you wouldn't really synchronize the change in it. So for example, this run event can be happening over time, right? So if I hold shift key and I'm running, that's not really a good RPC event because it wasn't like a one and done type deal. It, it's, it continues to happen. So that's why I'm using a, a synchronizing variable here, where it is to signify that the player jumped, we use this RPC call that also kicks off a status to signify that we jumped. Now we still use a variable to synchronize to tell our process on the player object that the player is jumping, but that's because jumping has some additional logic to it that allows the animation and everything kick off. And we'll look at that in a second. We also wanna handle the input events from the mouse. So let's add that now. And we'll create this rotation camera function. Oh, I spelled camera base wrong, whoops. So let's go up there and fix that, which means we'll probably have to fix this as well. So don't forget that. Yep, okay. Ortho normalize, which will clean up our axis uh, from any drift. And then we'll do camera rotation dot rotate. So this will rotate our camera uh, and we do negative move X because otherwise it doesn't make sense. If you just put, if you just make that a positive, it will be the opposite of what you expect when you move the mouse uh, back and forth. Uh, this is just to clean up our axis so that we don't have any camera or any uh, precision drift in our uh, camera base axis there. And then our camera rotation will be limited or clamped uh, based on uh, the camera rotation min and max that we have over here. And this was that camera up down movement that I had added uh, to whether or not you wanna inverse your mouse movement. So if you wanna to toggle that, just set it to a negative one up here. And then let's add one more function down here. Get camera rotation basis. This will allow our player object to have access to this because we're going to do some calculations uh, based on this so that they can rotate correctly. All right, so we just grab the camera rotation object, global transform basis, and we'll see that in the next uh, in the next class that we edit. Um, I also want to make sure that we're, I think our camera setup, uh, I think it's done there. And I just want to make sure that our player input that we're synchronizing down here, you can see that we're actually replicating everything we need to. So let's double check there. Uh, so we have our input direction, which we've captured and running, which is good. And let's also add the camera mount rotation and camera rotation rotation. So we have the camera mount rotation and also the camera, ro camera rotation or camera rot rotation. Oh, one thing I do wanna change is uh, to update what I was talking about with this jump RPC, we're actually not going to set this. We're going to set it to, where is it? This do jump. Uh, so this is just a flag that we'll use in the player script to initiate the jump object. Okay, let's just clean this up a little bit and drag these up here if I can. Okay, next let's move on to the player script. So we got a little bit of work here and this is gonna be the bulk of what we do to get this player to move and turn and synchronize those animations. 
All right, so let's go ahead and set up all the new variables that we need up here at the top. So we've got our speed, jump velocity, and let's go ahead and I think we can remove this camera 3D. Don't think we need that anymore because we're handling that all in the input file. And then this player input we don't need. Actually, we do need that. We'll keep that there, but let's just rename it to player input. Oops. Player input. Okay, first let's add some constants. These constants will help us with the movement and direction that we'll, that we'll look at in a minute. Motion will basically be our inputs and our root motion and orientation will govern the uh, transformations of the player object. So we'll see what those look like in a second. The two animations that we're gonna track through this animation enum are just jump up and walk. Uh, we will do idle and uh, running, but I'm not gonna handle it in this enum. So this export, we will track our current animation so that we can synchronize that to the other peers. Oh, I need to create a new variable here. Okay, or a new object. Let's create another node 3D and we're gonna call this uh, player model. And I'm gonna stick a new model in there. Right now I'm using the SWAT one. I'm going to get rid of that and place the new model in here. So let's just, we'll get to that in a second. And I'm going to add a placeholder animation tree and we'll just drag that over here. Great. And we'll use that animation tree to animate our player. We've got the player object and we are setting the multiplayer authority on that player input object here that you can see. So that was this script. Basically anything in here is authority to the client. Okay, so we have our ready function. I'm just gonna remove this because we don't need that anymore. And we are going to set the animation tree to active. That way our animations carry on through all the clients. Capture our player models, global transformation with orientation, and then we'll set its origin to a default vector three. And if it's not a server, we do not want it to run the process here. So this this process, uh, physics process uh, that we have on this machine uh, or on this client will only run on the server and then the rest of the motions and everything will just be synced from the server. So we're only gonna do that processing on the server. Our physics process, we're gonna change up a little bit. So I'm just gonna remove all this because we're gonna make some changes. I'm going to have a, uh, let's do an, a multiplayer, if multiplayer check. This is just going to be our function for handling the player's input. So that's that's where we're, where we're gonna sync the, this is where the calculations are gonna occur. And then if it's not the server, then we just animate the player. Okay, so we need to create that apply input function. Right, and the way that this works is this apply function uh, only running on the server, it's where all the calculations are gonna occur. Like our inputs will be governed by the local client and the server takes those values because they're synchronized. We're gonna synchronize them. I'm gonna show you in a second. And it performs the movement calculations and it updates the player's rotation and position and velocity. And it just synchronizes that through the synchronizing mechanism. But locally, the peer doesn't need to rerun that because it's governed through these synchronization variables. So we just tell the peer to animate the player based on the current uh, animation that the player is performing. Okay, so our motion is going to capture that player input. It's just basically the uh, direction that we're gonna go and it we interpolate that with the previous motion. So it just kind of smooths it out for us. But we're basically wanting to grab this function down here.
we're going to use these uh, camera uh, X and uh, Z and X vectors in a second. We're going to normalize that. We just want to keep the magnitude the same, so uh, we just need to know the direction. So that's what we're doing here. And we'll do the same thing with the X vector on the camera. So we're going to apply our gravity if we're not on the floor. I think we already had this before. Uh, and this is where I do my jump little magic using that do jump, that variable that's set in the RPC. Basically, our RPC tells our uh, server that this player wants to jump that will come into this condition here and it will set that player to jumping, uh, which will in, in turn, uh, we'll call this uh, animation here uh, to kick off the actual jump. And we'll just pass for there for now. And I really wanted to delay the actual jump motion a little bit because the timing of the animation, it, it seems like he he's like in the air and then he jumps. And it's just because this happens so fast, there's no way to do that. So I have seen, I believe in their demo project where they do a little bit of delay based on the time that has passed with the Delta. I didn't really take care of any of that here. I'm just doing something really basic. So don't put too much weight into this jump logic. So if you want to have something really similar, you can basically get rid of all this and just probably have a velocity jump call and it'll do something very similar. But uh, so we're just going to leave it for now and move on. So if we're not jumping, we're going to be walking if we have movement. So let's set our animations to walk. And it's not necessarily going to make them walk immediately because I still have to show you how I'm going to set up the animations. And uh, once we do, it'll make a lot more sense. But just because it says walk here and he's on the floor doesn't mean he's going to be walking. I, I have it set up in a way that uh, it's configured based on the uh, blend tree triangle. So we'll see that shortly. So we're creating this kind of faux target to represent uh, this uh, an object in space based off the camera and our motion changes. And I know it's a little tricky, but it allows us to perform these rotation calculations around the player so that we can actually enforce uh, the rotation of the player uh, based off this rotation. So let's just look at how to do that. So if we have a target and we have motion, meaning like we've actually uh, pushed uh, on the keyboard to have them move, we'll be able to uh, perform these rotation calculations. But we want to ignore it if it's uh, some trivial value. Okay, so that'll determine our new basis based off that rotation of that target. Like I said, it creates that kind of faux object in space. And then we get that rotation of our player and then we rotate to that. So we kind of do a calculation based on what that rotation would be. And then we apply that rotation with this slurp call here, that from and to. And then we uh, provide our delta with a uh, interpolation speed, like how fast, how smooth, and how much weight you want to put on that. So you can you can adjust this uh, as needed. And let's see how to apply that here with our root motion. Uh, and so we're going to use a uh, the animation tree uh, root motion functionality to get a transform to apply to our orientation. Uh, basically, this allows us to use animations to give us that 
uh, transformation, you'll basically want to have an animation like this that actually moves and is not just running in place. And it'll allow you to move the player based on that root motion. And if you want to know more about it, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. I'm not the expert at it, but I know that this works. So we're just going to roll with it. So we'll apply that transform to our orientation. So this will provide our uh, horizontal velocity. Now I'm adding a speed factor to this velocity. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. Uh, it allows it to allows the player to run a little faster. Uh, there might be a better way to do that. So you can play around with that or just not do this at all and get a feel for what that speed looks like. And then if you want to make adjustments or if this is wrong, let me know and then we can put it in the correct spot. I'm just trying to get the multiplayer thing up and running, so just bear with me. Let's uh, call our move and slide, and this will allow our player to move. And we'll do some cleanup down here. Uh, so I guess this is really just a way to clean up our uh, axis and, and make sure that everything hasn't accumulated any displacements that are going to be out of whack. And I had to look into this a little bit. This is from the third person demo that Godot provides. And it's really just a way to clean up your orientation and basis uh, so that we don't get some drift in the calculations and our axis that we're using to rotate this player don't start to degrade over time. Okay, so now that we have that, let's move on to our animate function. So we're gonna set our current animation to whatever the animation that was passed in. And I use this is running to set whether or not the player is running. And I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. And I'll show you why I, I used uh, zeros and ones because it's not really a flag. It actually in our animation tree or in the animation, uh, the blend tree that we use for this uh, walk or idle also has a run node on it. And we when we are at one, that means it's running. And again, I'm going to pull that up in a second. So these parameters aren't going to show up yet because we haven't added them. So I'm just going to add these and then we'll come back and finish them up in a second. All right, so let's swap out this model. I have a new model that I want to use, so I want to go ahead and uh, remove him from the scene. Let's delete nodes. Let's just get rid of him and I'm going to stick him in there. And I pulled this model off Mixamo. It's a, a site by Adobe with a bunch of free animations and characters. So let's just have a look at what, what that looks like really quick. So go ahead and drag this, uh, this good guy GLB up into the model. And again, you can use any player model. This is just something I'm using. And I actually want to move out these two out of there and just get rid of this object. OK, and then we'll drag our animation player over to the animation tree and we're going to have to set the root and this is where we're going to select a new animation node blend tree okay so this is going to be a really basic blend tree i did my best to just get something really quick up and running so let's just see how to do that with the basic animations like jump and walk and that sort of thing so we're going to create an animation for jump call it jump up set that to jumping and oh, by the way, uh, these animations here, idle, jumping, walking, running, etc., were pulled in from that model. Uh, that model was what I was showing you earlier. Uh, this Blender model here uh, has uh, four different animations that I'm importing as part of that. So when I exported that and dragged it in, we get those animations as part of this animation player. And you can see here, uh, we'll go ahead and actually set this up now that I opened it. So we have our idle. Uh, set to loop. That way he doesn't just do his idle animation once and stop. Same thing with running and walking. OK, so we got the animations set up there. And if we go back to our blend tree, uh, that's where these come from. So for this jump, uh, this jumping animation, uh, we want to drag that to a transition. 
And we'll name the transition state so we have a reference to it. And I believe if I click on it, uh, we'll go ahead and add the two states I'm gonna track in here, which are walk and jump. And we'll drag our walk over to, or I'm sorry, the jump over to the jump. And then let's create a new blend space 2D. And this will be our walking. And we're gonna open this editor in a second and it'll all make sense. Open time scale, call this walk speed. Drag this to here. Drag this up to walk. And then we can set to walk and then we'll drag our input to there. And that's our blend tree. Yeah, it's really simple, uh, but it does work. Um, so to finish this up though, we need to do a couple of things. I think we've got our uh, inputs set on the transition okay. So this animation is jumping. We've already got that set up. And down here, this is good. And in our blend space, uh, we're gonna hit open editor. And what we're gonna do is change the scales to this to zero, zero, and then one. Okay, so one, uh, one will be our scale here. And let's go ahead and add a node. We'll add our idle down here at the bottom. So our first animation will be at zero, zero. So then we'll do uh, another animation over here. We'll call this one walking. And then the one up here will be uh, running. You can see our nice tree here. And this goes back to when I was talking about the run setting. Uh, we'll add that down here and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Okay, so we've got our idle set. So you can see it up here, idle set there. And let's just make sure that this is walking. Yep, and then we'll set this to running great so we have our animation triangle and if we finish the setup on this animation tree we should start to see things moving up here we go so the animation player has to have a root node uh which is the player model that's the root of the animation so that the animation tree knows where to find the root motion object which is this root here i'll just bring that up again really quick so our armature is this object here in the player node and it has a skeleton i don't think i can click over there and then it has a root object, which is how that root motion thing works. You must have that. Okay, so now that we have our animation tree, if I hit active, maybe we'll get lucky and it'll work right away. Probably not because I'm sure I missed something. If we go over to one of these parameters and I set the blend to one, now he's walking. So uh, just so you have a better idea, if you care, uh, what that is, is if I set the blend position to one, uh, remember back in the the tree here, we have this blend space. I open the editor, uh, one is just down here. So zero, one, that's what that means. And then if I set it to uh, one, one, which is, what's it gonna be? Yep, it's gonna be running. So there's our run animation and it has a little blip in it and because the animation export isn't perfect, but your animations will be much better. And then if we set it back to uh, zero and zero, he's just gonna idle. So he should just be kind of hanging out there, moving, his arms are a little messed up. I think I need to re-import the idle. But yeah, he's subtly moving there, very subtle. I don't really like that idle animation, it's kind of boring, but, and his arm stance are a little little too tucked in. It's like he's got his hands in his pockets. Um, anyway, so I can just re-export that idle animation and, and have that look nice there. All right, so it looks like our blend tree set up. Um, let's try to do walking, or I'm sorry, let's try to do a jump really quick. Boop, and there's this jump. So that all worked out really nice, and, and you see how quick and easy that was? So we have all the basic fundamental animations. We've got a jump, we've got our idle, we've got walking and running, and it was just, I, I don't think this blend space was necessarily how you may wanna do it in your game. I think this is, works for a really simple, I'm not doing any strafing here. Uh, this is just to illustrate that we can synchronize animations pretty easily. Uh, but once you're uh, working on your game, you will wanna revisit and how to set up these blend trees. And it gets a little complicated, but uh, spend some time on it and you'll be able to uh, synchronize those animations uh, using the similar mechanisms that I have here. But again, this is just for illustration purposes. All right, so we got our player animation set up. And if we come back into our scripts, let's finish setting up our animations down in this area. Just get that up a little bit more. Okay, so what we can do is to set up. Okay, so what is this for? So this is for jumping. 
So we want to go to parameters and we're going to set a transition request and we're going to want to request the jump. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing. Just copy this down there. We'll do the same thing for walk. We're going to request the walk state. And again, going back to that walk state, that's what this, this is mapping to this, that state that we're requesting, that's walk and jump. That's jump and walk. That's what exactly what you're seeing. Those map to that. And then to do our uh, movement for the walk, set parameters, and we'll do blend position. And this, not movement, but the animation that we want, you can actually blend this, meaning on that triangle here, if you were like here in the middle, he would be like somewhere in between a walk and an idle. And then the same thing with going up this side here, he would be somewhere in between a walk and a run. Um, it's not gonna be very clean uh, right now in this setup because of the way, like I said before, this isn't the best animation tree. This is just to get it up and running. But for your game, you can put a little bit more um, effort and time into that to make sure that those animations work out really nicely. Uh, so that's all we're trying to do here. And we're gonna ba base it off the uh, motion. And then we'll set a flag here on whether or not uh, the player is running. So, so we're basically, this is gonna be set to like zero or one, and this is going to be zero or one as well. And again, that'll map to that triangle uh, if you look at it one more time. Uh, so if it's if we don't have a motion, it'll be just down here. And then if we do have a motion, uh, it'll be one for walking. And then if you hit whatever the player input running is, if that's synced to crossover, that'll set this to one, and then you'll be up here, which puts us at the running state. So we've got our animation set up, and we've got our player movement set up. I think we're getting pretty close. So if we go and let's check the server synchronizer, which we had from the last video, and what, we, what were we synchronizing? Position, player, and velocity. So we're still gonna keep those. Uh, we're not gonna sync position anymore, so we can trash that. Uh, so we're going to sync a couple different things. So we got our player, we got our velocity. We're going to sync the transform. We're going to have to add, do it manually. And then we're going to also sync the motion property, right? Because we're not exporting it. We're not going to see it here. So we'll do it manually. Let's do motion. And again, these are going to sync. These are basically sync variables uh, between all the clients and peers. And then we'll, we're going to sync the player model transform. I think that's how you do it. Nice, okay. And then one more player, which is current animation. Okay, great. So those will help us with our uh, rotation and motion of the player and our model uh, direction and, and transform and also our current animation that the player is actually doing. So we'll sync those and then we'll make sure we have everything in. Yeah, we have everything synced under the input already. I think we verified that. And what else? I Oh, I'll, one more thing back to the animation. I, I know this is probably should have done that earlier. What we want to do is add a root motion view. And again, I'm not the expert. This is a multiplayer video. So this is all like extraneous data. Uh, but what we're going to do is set the animation tree to that. And now you can see that it's moving. Do you see how I did that? And you can see like this fake ground uh, you won't see that in the game. This is just temporary just for the setup, but uh, during the actual gameplay, it, it'll it'll work correctly. So that's the last thing we wanted to add for our animation and that should get everything working. Okay, great. So I think we're almost ready for a test, but I just noticed one more thing. Uh, the camera was a little off. I just wanna bring that back uh, to zero. Let me see if I can. Okay, let's actually set it at 1.6. And we'll also want to make sure that it's rotated correctly. And instead of rotating the camera mount itself, let's rotate the spring arm. And then let's give it a, while we're here, let's give it a slight downward rotation and that should be okay. So in theory, everything should work. Uh, let's just, see what happens. Let's just start up the game and see what happens. Okay, so of course we had a problem. Player input, input motion, invalid index. So 
something doesn't like this input motion. Let me double check something over in the player input. Did I forget to create an input motion? Oh, I'm using input direction from the old one. Well, let's change it to input motion because that's the correct one. And then of course we'll have to update input directions. Okay, so input direction needs to go away. That was an oversight. And I think I can just hit player. I think I can hit player input, input direction, input motion. There we go. So now it's input motion. I already have, yeah, there we go. So let's try it again. Let's hit play. Let's make sure our guy moves first. Okay. Oh, so there's this jump. And the jump is a little awkward uh, because it's like you hit space bar and then he does the jump. So it should just be kind of like here. Uh, so I can like cut that short or you can make that adjustment on your jump if, if however you wanted to make it work for your game. But again, this isn't an animation tutorial. This is a multiplayer tutorial. So, okay, so now I can move around. So let's see. This will be a lot nicer if I could like capture the mouse but for this we're just going to do this so you shouldn't see him run by so so you can see that the the again it's the speed is very high so that's why it kind of looks like he's being silly because i set the speed really high on that velocity calculation but um the animations are working you can see he's walking he's walking he's walking and then if we turn up the run he's running so that looks good there and if i jump look at that synced perfectly i mean it is on the same computer but you get the idea um and then let's test this guy run and jump past him look at that okay so now we can do jumps double jumped because it hit the ground and then yeah so there's some things that you can work out like the jump isn't necessarily perfect like i mentioned earlier but it does it demonstrates that you can do a jump and uh it, it is synchronized via an rpc and then our running state, which is holding shift. Uh, and if you didn't notice that, just for giggles, let's just look over here really quick. I do have a input map set up with the shift that acts as our run input. And of course the ADWS for our movements. And that's why that's showing up there. And this is excellent. So this is working great. And I, I'm, I'm really happy how this turned out. It, like I said, it, it wasn't too much work to get this up and running. And now you have a multiplayer movement, complete synchronization and with the character movements. And it shows the player rotating correctly, uh, which is really cool. Before we wrap up, let's just highlight some key takeaways from this multiplayer demo. The first thing I wanna look at is the player input object. And under the replication tab, you can see that we're synchronizing the running and input motion fields. And that is heavily used over in this player script to determine the direction of the player based on keyboard input so that the server knows how to calculate the player's rotation. And of course, at the bottom, we also use the running field to determine whether or not the player is running and whether or not we should show that animation. And then we also synchronize the camera rotation and the camera mount rotation. And when we synchronize those objects, it allows the server to figure out which direction the player is facing based off that camera rotation and then it's able to transform and rotate the player and synchronize that to the other clients. And then if we have a look under the server synchronizer, we're basically synchronizing the most critical fields for the player, like velocity, transform, and motion. And again, the server is gonna use those fields to synchronize the values to the other clients. So if the player is moving in some direction, it'll know to synchronize those values because we've captured them here. And then the last couple fields are current animation and the player model transform. So Current animation is pretty self-explanatory, so whatever the player animation is happening on the client, like walking or running, we just synchronize that animation to the other peers. And then the player model transform is what we use to actually turn the player model. So we're not actually turning the base player object, we're turning the model, and that way we have that kind of separation of responsibility there. So it may not look like a whole lot, but the synchronization of just a few fields allows us to have that multiplayer functionality, which gives us the player rotation and movement. We can show jumping, we can show running and walking animations and whatever else you wanna add to it. So you can just use this as a good starting point and build off of that for your multiplayer game. Anyways, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed because I've got a lot more multiplayer videos in the queue. Thanks for watching.